Hey everyone, my name is Miles McCrocklin. We're going to uh, uh, start this talk on coordinated visualizations, which is kind of an introduction to crossfilter.js. Um, I work at Lunos, so yeah. Uh, so the, the t this talk is going to be focusing on what what is data vi visualization in the context of building an application. Uh, what are coordinated visualizations? Uh, where do they derive? Um, and look at some good examples. Uh, cr uh, like, let's deep dive into the CrossFilter uh, API and touch on DC.js and take a look at some resources. So, what is data visualization? Well, according to uh, Wikipedia, data visualization is the study of visual representation of data, meaning uh, information has, uh, that has been abstracted in some <coughs> schematic form, inclu including attributes or variables for the units of information. So what does that mean? Well, based off of that very vague thing, uh, very vague definition, you can think of lists as a uh, visualization. You can think of tables as a visualization, or even tabs. These are just what most people think of as interfaces. So data visualization in the context of application design uh, is in many ways an uh, a interface component or an interface paradigm. So what is a visual interface? Uh, it's a collection of visual representations of an application's data mo model. So basically showcasing the, da the information that you have to convey to your users. Uh, so data wrapping up what I said, data visualizations are not just charts. They are the interface of your product. They are uh, like your product as a whole. And again, reiterating, data visualizations are views of data mapped to some visual space. If you're familiar with data, uh, D3, it's, which stands for data-driven documents, this is a very similar to the definition of D3. And th again, <laughs> Data visualizations allow people to process information, leveraging the way the individuals can see. That's why a lot of people are looking at charts uh, and saying that that's data visualization, primarily because of the fact that it is a more condensed way of visualizing information. You're not, le uh, you're not uh, enforcing your data to scroll or anything like that. You're condensing it into some visual format. So. If, if data visualization is your UI, what is a coordinated visualization? Well, coordinated visualizations are coordinated views. So what's the basic example of a coordinated view? Uh, coordinated view is just link components or individual visual visualizations via some interaction. A tab, uh, a tab paradigm is a coordinated visualization. So, if this has been around for a while, if this has been around as far as I can tell since GUIs have been invented. Uh, so let's take a look at one of the best examples of that, the Smalltalk IDE. <laughs> um, here's an example of one of the first coordinated visualizations. Okay, it's not necessarily making the most optimal use of the space it has, but it's a really great uh, um, first approach. You can see it again with a very old computer. But if you notice, there's already some charts way back then. We're not doing anything completely innovative. We're just putting it in the browser. So to reiterate that this is, has been around for a while, take a look at Snap Together Visualization, which came out of uh, University of Maryland's uh, HCI group in 1999. We're gonna watch a little video. Uh, I'll stop it at some point, but just to. Oh wait, <laughs> we're not watching a little video. Does is there a way to? Are exploring information. Multiple views can provide a more comprehensive picture. Coordination between the views can greatly improve user performance. However, because of the diversity of data and tasks users are not likely to find an existing user interface containing the views they need. They are forced to browse with uncoordinated or single view interfaces. Snap Together Visualization, or SNAP, 
allows users to build the coordinated multiple view interfaces that are customized to their data and tasks. For example, let's design a better directory browser for system administrators. SNAP is based on a relational model. From the main menu, we open a database of our directory structure. The list of tables and queries appears on the left, and the possible visualizations are listed on the right. Let's display the folders in a simple outliner view by dragging the query onto the visualization. To see the contents of folders, we drag a query that extracts the contents of a given folder onto a grid view. To coordinate these views, we drag the snap from one view to the other. In the snap specification dialog, we choose to coordinate the select action in the outliner to the load the details in the grid. Now, selecting folders in the outliner I'm fast displays forward a little bit the contents this is getting ridiculous. Um. <laughs> so that selecting in the tree map also selects in the outliner. I noticed several big QuickTime files consuming disk space. Oh. Selecting the suspicious directory highlights it in the outliner and in turn displays the details in the grid. All right. Selecting in the outliner. Oh. So you kind of get the point. This has been around for a while, uh, and we do it all the time. Maybe we just don't put charts uh, in, in a coordinated view. So where are we at today? What are, what are some great examples of coordinated visualizations? One example is Square's registry. Oh, that's messed up. Um, it's Square Registry, or Square Analytics, I think it's what it's called, basically allows the users to interact with uh, the underlying dimensions that they want to work with to uh, naturally understand what their data is doing, uh, or like how their data is shaped. Uh, so I don't have a demo for that, because uh, I don't know anyone at Square, but I do have DC.js's, or, or Crossfilter's basic demo. And I just wanted to show a very similar type of uh, interaction model, which allows you to move your data, and you can understand the relative distributions uh, as you are interacting with the data. So as you can see here, arrival delays that have, say, uh, negative 20 to 0 starts normalizing, but you, and it's pretty interesting. So really high delays happen January 13th or January 12th. You can also deep dive in even further and see what the distributions look like in another subset. This is, the, this is what CrossFilter can help you do. Um, another example of a, a uh, interactive visualization is Trulia's um, house hunting all day, every day. Uh, which allows you to interact with the data uh, itself. And one of the th things that uh, is really great about this is that you can really just see what the difference between, say, the patterns of computer users and mobile users. You can really instantaneously see that people are using their computer during the workday to search for houses. <laughs> kind of <laughs> slacking off there. Um, but uh, interestingly, nowadays, when you're, at, when you're not at work, you're not using your computer. So you can kind of see these trends, and you can also see how they relate in individual states. For example, Nevada is a very uh, phone driv or mobile-driven state in for Trulia. Um, so yeah, this is a, another example of a coordinated visualization. So now we know where we're at today. Where are we going? Where are we? Uh, where is this this area of uh, UI design moving towards? Well, uh, Stanford's uh, HCI department, I believe, uh, created a data visualization, uh, real-time visual query uh, querying of big data called Immense. Uh, and there's some demos. This is leveraging WebGL and things like that that are kind of not ready for uh, products quite yet, but definitely cool to see. So 
as you can see, the, it can work really well with up to a billion uh, rows uh, with, let's say, five dimensions, but you don't know what it does yet. It actually just allows you to interact fluidly with the data that you have. So you can select and understand the underlying structure. There's uh, another example for querying again, but this with uh, a more categorical dimension. So now, now you understand what coordinated visualizations are. How can we create them? Well, uh, this is the Bay Area D3 user group, so I'm going to talk about CrossFilter, which was a project uh, that Square uh, while Mike Bostock, the creator of D3, was at Square, crea uh, created for the Square Analytics. CrossFilter is a JavaScript library for exploring large multivariate data sets uh, in the browser. Extremely fast uh, interactions are supported uh, with coordinated views uh, and works with millions of records. So. Crossfilter is a data manip uh, is used to manipulate manipulate data by filtering, grouping, which is a type of aggregation, with very quick speeds. It is not a visualization library. So, you want to learn about Crossfilter? Here's here's it's very simple. You have some data, so you give Crossfilter some data. That's that's the first step you have to do. You just give it some data, and if you have new records, give it some more more data. Uh, thing to note, though, crossfilter is intentionally slow on write and extremely fast on read. This is by design. So what I mean by this is that uh, crossfilter is intended for fast querying, but not intended to have a stream of data being thrown into it. So crossfilter has a lot of different types of ways of interacting with your data. Let's talk about dimensions, which are the first uh, iteration or like the one of the first ways you're probably going to interact with your data uh, in this model. The easiest example of a dimension is just if you have a, a column, uh, row column uh, data set, the column of, a t of that tabular data set is a dimension. But since Crossfilter is a, a data manipulation library, it really supports le uh, leveraging those dimensions in combinations. So you can take one row and then merge it with the other row. Uh, uh, or you can take a subset of that row, for example, just get a year. Um, so it's like having helper columns in, in Excel, I guess. Uh, so to create a dimension, uh, basically all you have to do is get the row that you, or get the column you want for every row. Uh, you, that, that's the, you create an anonymous function uh, and get the, t uh, the year of some time variable. Or you create uh, an anonymous function to get the row, or the value of the said row. Very simple. Now, now that we have the rows, we want to figure out how to filter on these rows. So, how do we filter? With the filter function, you take dimension, filter by uh, a, a array which says between 2011 and 2013, get me uh, all of my data, or I filtered on this. Let's do something about it. Uh, or maybe we just want all odd values for some odd reason. Uh, or just want only values of 200. Uh, there's also the ability to reset the filtering that you have. So now that we can filter on, the uh, on these dimensions, how do you actually get the data you want, like the raw data? Well, you can leverage top. So you take a dimension uh, and top uh, we'll take the top k values, in this case 10, and just spit them out to you. So it sorts on that dimension in some sortable fashion. Um, and then to get all the dimensions, just pass in infinity. So I wanted to make a note here to be careful about the number of dimensions you create. The reason be being the dimensions are bound to the cross filter ones created. So that means that it's stateful. Uh, creating more than eight dimensions and more than 16 dimensions introduce additional overhead. Yeah. <laughs> so be very wary of how you create uh, dimensions in CrossFilter. Groups. What are groups? Well, grouping 
Grouping is an aggregation in some form. So you take your dimension and you group it. Uh, by default, grouping uh, supports counting. So that, let's say you have a dimension of, uh, well, we'll see further in, a, in another further example, but it will count your uh, values that are associated with it, count the rows that are associated with that individual dimension's value. Um, so here's an example of, for getting the years. So it'll just group the years and count them and aggregate them in a count. Or another example is for getting the, uh, the f function, like getting the groups by buckets of 100. Uh, like you don't need the value uh, 5 versus 5.01. You want to just group them to a value of 100 to get some more insight on, uh, into the data or to work uh, for better performance. So groups count the values by default, but they can be extended to do a lot more. Grouping is like MapReduce. MapReduce is a programming model for processing large data sets with a parallel distributed algorithm on a cluster. It's a lot of jargon. Uh, basically, uh, MapReduce just will emit values. So you take uh, this data set. You have key A, value 10, et cetera. So on, for each item, for each item in this, uh, this list, emit the key and emit account one for each. Uh, and then once you get all those uh, values for the key, take some action. In this case, just get the count of, or like the length of the array. Uh, and spit out the results, and your results will be something like this. So uh, in order to do more extensive uh, interactions with your data, you need to create f custom reduction functions on groups. Uh, this reduction function, for example, gets the mean. Uh, so you take, you keep track of count, by incrementing, every time you get a new value, you increment your uh, count uh, your count, or and add the value to that uh, value set, or you decrement the count when you don't have uh, data, and decrement the value when you or by the value when you do or w like when you don't have data, and you have to have an initial function which just basically initializes your reduction. Uh, so what does this do? Well, it gets the mean. So you have A, 15, B, 100, C, 2,000. These are the means of the corresponding key sets. So now that we know how to manipulate the data, how do we get the users to manip manipulate the data? You want this to be an interactive visualization, not uh, a workspace. Well, you can leverage something like DC.js. DC.js is a charting library that wires up all of the visualizations with some filtering er interactions or and uh, uh, on the co corresponding dimension. So re reiterating, give it a dimension and a group, and it'll visualize the data. So all you do is create a row chart, <laughs> give it a dimension, give it a group, and you're good to go. Bar chart, the same thing. Very, very, very simple. And it allows you to create very quickly these interactive visual uh, visualizations. So uh, to touch on some resources, take a look at uh, a series from uh, Ian called Prototype. Uh, he has some cross-filter videos. I recommend you check them out. They're pretty good ways of just showing how you can play with data in cross-filter. Datavor is another uh, is a competitor in many ways to uh, CrossFilter. It has its own. Um, it's it's not written in JavaScript. Uh, it's not like JavaScript based um, querying. It's more of like a its own querying language, uh, which is why it hasn't really caught on. But you should check it out just to see for comparison. Um, there's some things on coordinated visualizations and uh, Snap to Diverse is one for creating, uh, helping people create their own. Lark is this thing for Microsoft Surface. It's a little uh, crazy. Not the new Microsoft Surface, the old gigantic one. Um, 
and then there's some highly coordinated, just some more papers to ta uh, take a look at. So again, thank you. Uh, questions? You said that you read fast and write slow. Yes. Is that, that's all volatile memory, or are you, is there some local caching? Uh, it's all volatile memory. Yeah. So you're going to be, you're going to be. You're on your own on that. Yep. Uh, would it render well in, in smartphones? Uh, <laughs> somebody just asked me that earlier. Uh, it, it, when smartphones are more powerful, it will. Uh, really, <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of heavy processing being done. Uh, I think, from my understanding, the new Safari on iOS 7 is supposed to be really, really fast. So the, uh, we'll see how that turns out. I haven't tested it out, but uh, we'll see what happens in that smartphone thing. But I don't think it's really quite ready for it. Maybe in controlled data sets, but not in big, uh, unwieldy ones. Anything else? All right. Well, thanks again.